Rocky and I get around the world looking for the uh, bleeding edge of business. And today I'm, I'm seeing Jaspersoft, which is a business intelligence tool. Now, what the heck is that? Well, you can see a lot of data, a lot of charts and graphs, and it's all built on open source. And we're going to talk about it right now. Who are you? I'm Brian Gentile. I'm the CEO of Jaspersoft. Now, I've been in Silicon Valley for 20 years now, 20 years out of a 27-year career in technology. And I've been with companies like Apple and Sun Microsystems and then a number of mid-size and small companies. I started with Jaspersoft on its board of directors and I've been the CEO for the past five years. Very cool. Jaspersoft does business intelligence, right? What, yeah. what does that mean? Because a normal person out there probably doesn't know what business intelligence software is. Yeah, we, we've cleverly used the open source model in a commercial approach to create a really large audience for our reporting and analytics tool. So business intelligence fundamentally is about reporting and analytics. It's about being able to look at data in new and insightful ways that allows you to make better, faster business decisions. So we've come across a lot of unique distinctions in our journey at Jaspersoft that allow more people in more corners of the globe to truly use this reporting and analytics where in the past it was too costly and complicated. So this is why the open source model uh, in its intersection with business intelligence is so powerful. So I used to work at Microsoft and seven years ago, you know, I uh, interviewed them and there's a whole bunch of other companies that are older companies now, business objects and stuff like that. Yeah. How, what makes you guys different or uh, how do you fit into that playing field? Yeah, there are a few points of real distinction and, and the, the world of open source is, is maturing and the world of business intelligence is pretty mature, more than 20 years old now. So what we've done as points of distinction are to really use a genuine community-based open source model to reach an incredibly large audience. So this is point of distinction number one and that audience, to give you some statistics, we've been downloaded more than 16 million times we regularly sustain 200,000 to 250,000 downloads per month of our tools. Um, we have 300,000 registered technical community members in the Jaspersoft community and ecosystem. It makes us by far the largest BI ecosystem in the world. Um, we estimate that we have 175,000 production deployments of our software around the globe today powering some 130,000 applications. We reach millions of people every day through our tool. It's because of all these statistics that we've, I think, properly claimed to be the most broadly, widely used business intelligence tool in the world. Wow. I had no, no idea you had so many downloads. Yeah. Um, what kind of business is this for? It sounds like it's for almost every business engaging on the numbers. Is that true? It is. It's very broadly used, which brings me to point of distinction number two, beyond open source. The second most important reason that someone would choose Jaspersoft is because of our modern approach. We have a really lightweight, web standard, 100% open architecture that's built to be deployed and scaled across the web, literally at web scale. The result of that is simplicity, it's low cost, it's deployment to any device, because to us a client is a client, whether it's a mobile device or a desktop or a laptop or a tablet. Um, and it allows more companies to do that more effectively because the cost and complexity is, is missing. And that gives us huge advantage against the aged proprietary vendors that we so commonly displace. Yeah, when I walk into businesses now, I see a lot of these LED, LCD screens, yeah. or LED screens. I call them data porn walls, other people call them <laughs> data dashboards, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I bet your software is running on a lot of yeah. those because it tells the executives at a quick glance what's going on. You know, yeah. if you're at Procter & Gamble or at you know, Walmart, I'm sure they're running stuff like that. That's right. It, what what does the modern business need on those screens and how yeah. do you provide it, I guess? Well, it is a common starting point. I mean, it's commonly referred to as a dashboard of some sort, right? And you literally, the, the metaphor of a dashboard is still a really rich, good metaphor. Today, we've modified the term a little bit. We call them mashboards because not only can you extract data from traditional relational sources and display them in some very clever visual format, but you commonly can combine other web-based data, whether it's 
geographic information or social media feeds or news feeds or something to make a really complete contextually relevant dashboard. This is really vital to making great business decisions today. So at our customers we see all over the globe, uh, they are usually starting with this dashboard or mashboard like view that allows them to drill into different data and make decisions quickly or more accurately or both. You, you mentioned a keyword that I'm uh, focusing on. I'm writing a book about contextual software. Mm -hmm. How is business changing now uh, in 2012? What are you seeing happening? And d drill in a little bit more on con context, because yeah. I think that's interesting. Context is everything in decision making. Uh, for decades, we've had lots of data, not enough information. And today, it's not only not enough information, but it's not enough context. So the principles of being able to create an information view that is contextually relevant for anybody's job and what might be relevant to you and your role and the decisions you have to make is different than anybody else. But you should be able to create a contextually relevant dashboard, a set of reports and analytic views that bring together the information, not, not too much, not too little, to allow you to make the right decision at the right time. It is all about context. And for you, what, what constitutes context is going to be different than someone else. So we sought about creating a tool that would allow you to create in a dashboard-like environment that was contextually important to your role. That's really awesome. People who have never built a business dashboard, yeah. what do they need to know to get started? You know? Well, I mean, being, a, don't, being an, a relative expert in your data domain is important. And usually, um, knowledge workers have some pretty deep understanding of the data that they could access to make their jobs more successful. And so just knowing a lot about what the data helps because you know how to format it, you know how you'd like to visualize it, you know how often it has to be refreshed or how often it has to be presented to you so you can make good decisions. You know what other data, if it was combined with that, would make a more powerful context. And so it's really just knowledge about your role and about the kind of data. That's the most important thing. When we sit down with customers, that's what we want to know about. Uh, accessing the data nowadays, formatting it, structuring it in a way that's visually appealing is not difficult. It's really more about the domain expertise of the individual and thinking about what would be important to make a better contextually relevant experience emerge. Do you have any examples uh, of companies that are doing it really well uh, yeah. and what they're learning from their, from their business data? Absolutely. Uh, 60 to 70 percent of our business is actually embeddable BI, meaning other people that take our other companies that take our software and they build us into their software and then they resell us as their reporting and analytics tool. Uh, because we're so modern, Java-based, open web standards, we become commonly used as this embedded environment. Now, these are the very companies that recognize that the data that's being generated by their applications is just as valuable as their applications. We, we call them data-driven applications. And so by liberating that data and exposing it in reports and analytic views, they're literally delivering more value to their end customers. And they're using a tool that they didn't have to build. They're just able to license it from Jaspersoft. So we have customers who are creating, for instance, we have a customer that's a retail ERP system for retail establishments, some of the biggest most well-known retail brands in the United States use this ERP system that's our customer, and, and our customer then takes Jaspersoft and makes a performance management dashboard that allows every retail customer of theirs to begin with some intelligence about what's going on in the retail franchise. Sales, sales by store, uh, supply chain information, a wide variety of reports that give more control to the people who need to make the decisions about what's going on inside the operation. They have deep data domain knowledge, though. Think about it. They know a lot about what's going on in that retail environment, and they're able to package up dashboards and reports that are sort of best practices right out of the box, and then they work with their customers to customize this. It's a brilliant maneuver, and they're, in a sense, giving a lot more value to their customers by using Jaspersoft as their embedded BI tool. Uh, and we have many customers like that in a wide variety of industries. Wow. Um, Windows 8 is about to come out. Uh, how is that going to change your business? Yeah, fortunately for us, the operating system layer is not an important design point. I say, I say fortunately because they change all the time. Yeah. We really just focus on the browser as a deployment. So for us, it's more about changes in, in IE or Firefox or Chrome or Safari. Those are really our deployment types. The fact that it's running on Windows 7, Windows 8, Mac OS, Linux, um, we're relatively indifferent, or, or iOS, if it's a tablet or Android, we're relatively indifferent. For us, it's all about the browser because we deliver everything inside of the browser. 
Yeah. It's both a huge advantage and it's been an important design constraint because as browser technologies have matured and improved, we've been able to deliver a lot more functionality. But six years ago, it was, it was hard. It was hard to deliver rich functionality purely inside of a browser. Today, that's not the case. Now you guys have really, really nice interactive components that that's you right. can click on the country and that's see right. the sales and rejigger, repivot the, the tables. It's really, really beautiful. That's right. Um, how's mobile changing this world? It, it, and I'll throw a theory out that mm -hmm. uh, the notification systems that you have now on your phones are giving an affordance where I want business data shoved to me, yeah. shown to me in real time. That's right. Are you seeing the same trend, and, yeah. and how are you planning? How are you dealing with that? I guess? We we call so the small real estate devices like like smartphones. We call them guided experiences. The the experience that an end user would want or a user would want in business intelligence is a very guided approach. You'd have to step them through a simple process, providing them with information and and uh, feedback at each point. And so we've designed our interface and our our uh, applications for the iPhone and for Android with that in mind. Small real estate, function-specific guided experience, but it works very much like you just described. And as you might imagine, it's customizable because we can never anticipate all the things that our customers would want to modify and improve based on our sample application. So we provide a sample application and a software development kit, and then we allow them to customize their own guided experiences on the small form factor devices. On a tablet, it's a good bit different because a tablet has plenty of real estate to allow navigation you know, using multi-touch gesture-based techniques, much like, a tab much like a laptop or a desktop computer. So we're able to provide a fuller experience. In a sense, on the, on the tablets, um, there's no distinction between what our software does and how it behaves inside of a web browser and what it does on a laptop or a desktop because the real estate is there to support it. Got it. Yeah. How do I host my uh, BI data? Do I host it on my own data centers? Do I have? Do you host my data? Talk about the, yeah. the various methodologies. Great, great use. question. I mean, this is the kind of a conversation we'd have with a customer, because for, from our perspective, again, we're um, very flexible. I was going to say indifferent. We're not indifferent, but we're flexible. Uh, our software can run wherever a customer wants it to run. Can run on premises, down the hall on a server, in a virtualized data center. Can run in a private cloud, a public cloud. Uh, we support all those environments, and it's not because we've had to work to do that. We've simply crafted a very elegant modern architecture that doesn't care as long as it's installed in a, you know, in a tr in some sort of typical fashion. Doesn't matter where the installation occurs. The data set can also be wherever you need it to be. It depends on latency. It depends on how much um, lag time you're willing to put up with, with queries and data being moved across the network. Some customers are incredibly performance oriented, so they want the data to be right near the application server and the database server. And so that requires a configuration that's all together. Some customers don't have that much data and it's simpler and they can separate the cloud running instance of our server with the data set which might be in a different location and so on. So the configurations vary. From our perspective, we're very flexible. Our customers love that flexibility because they can start in one configuration and move to another. Sometimes security is a concern, sometimes applications evolve and they need and want to evolve the architecture with it. So it's a huge advantage for us in the marketplace. And we've been working with Rackspace for, I don't know, seven years probably as one of the major hosted providers for us to deliver our application, and we continue to. Well, we appreciate that. You're on OpenStack as well. That's right, right. yeah. So uh, we just announced OpenStack Private Cloud, so you can host on a private cloud That's inside right. your own infrastructure if you need to, or That's right. out on the public cloud. Anything else I need to know about this space? Because it's an interesting space that keeps evolving, and, and it's a really important one, because yeah. you know, if you can't see intelligence from your business, yeah. You know, you're going to be running blind, right? Yeah, it's true. Well, I think what's important is what's next. Um, we're always trying to push the envelope of innovation inside of this open standards environment, web delivery. And so very soon, in the next uh, six months, we're going to have a series of product releases that will allow us to deliver more functionality inside of a browser than many other BI providers can provide on the desktop. So it's a matter of us pushing what can be done in this architecture. And uh, I'm thrilled with what our engineers have come up with. So I'd say stay tuned. The power of our community combined with the innovativeness of the JasperSoft engineering team is a pretty unbeatable combination. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Where do we learn more about it? Yeah, I'd urge everyone to go to jaspersoft.com, our commercial website, or jasperforge.org, which is our open source community website. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming Thanks, in and, and really appreciate the support. My pleasure. Thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm.